This is the Land Rover Discovery Sport and it's a sign of affluence. So you see them parked outside posh supermarkets, outside posh houses, and at the gates of posh private schools. And you can understand why, because you know the car's got the right image. It also raises you up above the chattering classes and it's got enough space inside it to take you, your kids, and their friends to their overly structured middle-class sporting activities. Now, the car you might think is gonna be rather expensive, but it's actually more reasonable than you might think. You see, it starts from 31, thousand pounds but if you click up there to go to carwire.co.uk you can compare offers from top dealers and buy at a price you're confident with and on average people save three thousand six hundred pounds on new car at carwow and when you climb inside the discovery sport it's got that effortless land rover design it's all very easy to use and find your way around slight problem is that in places the quality and it just doesn't feel quite as expensive as a Mercedes GLC. In terms of equipment, it's not bad though. So the model you want is the SE Tech. It's got pretty much all you need. So you get all round parking sensors. You also get automatic wipers and you get part of the seats and they're heated, which is, there's the button, which is, you know, invaluable on a cold day like today. You also get an infotainment system with satellite navigation. Now the system itself, it's, it's actually quite easy to use. The problem is that it's slow to respond and the graphics, the graphics are, they're pretty low res. Now if you click up there, you can watch that in-depth infotainment video for an in-depth look at that. You can also have another look around the car's cabin and check out some of the cubby spaces. So we've got some cubby spaces under there, with two USB chargers, which is quite handy. The glove box is a reasonable size. There's some more storage up there and yes, yeah, some under here. And the door bins are huge, easily carry a big bottle. And this practicality theme extends to the, the back of the car. So there you go. Now, actually in the back seats, there's plenty of room. Look, I've got lots of knee room, lots of headroom. I can slide, I can recline the chairs. The middle seat, well, it's a little bit firmer, but there's still plenty of room in it. You can carry three people in the middle row of this car at once. It's not too bad, and it's helped by the fact that you don't have too much of a big hump in the floor. If you wanna, you can slide, well, sorry, not slide, you can fold down the center seat to carry longer items. There is the option of using the armrest or popping this out using a cubby space. It's all very practical. Down here, you have a USB charger, a USB charger. There's also a 12 volt socket, so everyone can charge their mobile devices. Big news though on this car, of course, is the fact that it is, there we go, it's a seven seater. So I'll just hop into the back. Not too hard to get into the back. Better move this out of the way so you can see what the heck is going on. So if I pull this seat back all the way, Yes, there's not much knee room, but if I move it a little bit forward, I'm fine for knee room. What's not so good is headroom. Really, it's only for children back here or for adults for very short journeys, especially as the fact that, look, I'm sitting quite low down with my knees quite high. feels like I'm doing some kind of yoga pose. There are some useful features back here. You can control the ventilation system, get some cup holders, and there's also over here a 12 volt socket. Think about this car though. Well, you can carry seven people in it. You can't carry seven people and their luggage at the same time. And I'll show you why, because look. So the Discovery Sport does have a decent sized boot. Actually, the SE Tech comes as standard with the automated tailgate. Now look, so this, this is the boot space. Yeah, there's not much of it, is there? So you do have to fold these down if you want to carry some proper luggage. But like I said, these seats are occasional. Then once you have folded it down, look at that. There is loads of room. There's no load lip to lift stuff over. So you can just slide items straight in. You get some useful tether points there. That's available with the car, which is once again handy. And check this out. If I want to lower these seats, I can do it electronically. The only thing is I will have to walk around to fold them completely flat. There we go. And once folded down, as you can see, you've got an absolutely cavernous load area there. This is one practical car. And you can see for yourself by clicking up there to watch our individual practicality video, you see exactly how much stuff we could squeeze into this car's boot, how easy it is to fit a child seat in the back, and exactly what it's like with three adults in the middle row. So the Discovery Sport is very practical, but what's it like to drive? You can only get the Land Rover Discovery Sport with one two-litre diesel engine, but you can get it in two power outputs. 
So the one to go for is the one in this car. It's the higher power version with 180 horsepower and it is quick enough when you put your foot down. Now, Land Rover says it should be able to do 53 miles per gallon, but I'm getting, I'm getting 37. It's all right. Now, what's also all right is the manual gearbox to get a standard with this car, but I reckon you should pay extra and upgrade to the nine-speed automatic because it really suits this car very well. Now, one of the things I really like about the Discovery Sport is that you just seem to sit higher than you do in rival SUVs, say like a Mercedes GLC, and that means you do really feel like you're commanding the road and it helps when navigating this big car through town. The only disappointment I have really with the visibility is the thick rear pillars and well, the rear window is quite small and if you click up there you can see for yourself by joining me for a 360 degree passenger ride video. In terms of the rest of the driving experience, well, this is a reasonably comfy car to travel in, so at speed it's, it's quite quiet, though you do get a bit of wind whistle whipped up by those door mirrors. One thing that is a bit surprising is that the suspension feels a bit firm and fidgety at town speeds, but the faster you go, the better it gets, though that's no excuse for speeding outside of a school. Then there's the handling, which, well, it's very 4 by 4 -y. So you turn the wheel a bit, nothing happens. Then you turn it a lot, and whoa, all of a sudden it's got a light rolling and dipping into the corners. But it still grips and holds the road as well as you need this kind of car to. And anyway, you know, you don't want to make all your passengers sick. But there is something else, and that's if you're faced with a roadblock like this, you can suddenly take a detour, go round it, <laughs> by going off-road, because this is a proper 4x4, four four, and yeah, if you want a car to go off-road regularly, this is a great choice, because it's not just some pretend 4x4, it's a proper 4x4, and it's got all the features you need to make it easy to drive off-road as well. So I've got hill descent control, so here's a hill, it's a bit slippery this slope, and it's just gonna gently take me down the hill. There we go. Under control, just as the name suggests. However, not everything about the Discovery Sport is good. Here's five annoying things about it. This model is called the HSC Luxury, but bits of this shiny plasticky trim are pretty blooming far from the luxury. There's nowhere really to store the load cover when you've got the seven seats in place. I mean, you can kind of leave it like that, but I'm guessing it won't really work. No, it doesn't work. Look at these really useful vents to aid cooling of the brakes. Oh, wait a minute, they're filled in. It's just naff styling plastics. The location of the switches for the electric windows is a bit silly up here. Really, you want them down here. And like with most rivals, you can't get a six-cylinder diesel engine with a Discovery Sport. It's a four-cylinder diesel only. Thankfully, there's plenty to like about this Land Rover to help make up for its shortcomings. Thanks to the dual-view screen, while the driver is looking at the sat-nav, the passenger can watch television. There's heater elements on these rear quarter lights so you don't need to scrape them to get them defrosted on a cold morning. Underneath here you've got a couple of cup holders and this one's removable. It has a secret hidey hole where you can store your Waitrose party sausages. You even get curtain airbags all the way back here for the third row of seats. The Discovery Sport has a special pedestrian airbag built into the bonnet. It's just under here. Now, if you click up there, you can get more information and save an average of £1,900 on a Land Rover Discovery Sport at carwow.co.uk. Now, this car, my verdict. Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist it because the Land Rover Discovery Sport is both practical and desirable. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and click on the big car wire roundel to subscribe to our channel. Also, if you click on those video boxes, you can watch our detailed practicality, infotainment and 360 degree passenger ride video for the Discovery Sport. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in this video? It was the Discovery related song on the infotainment system.